Hello guys, welcome to Hankins Custom Rifles, another episode of Hanks TV, and today is May the 31st, it's Memorial Day. Um, Memorial Day is a day that you're supposed to remember all your veteran soldiers that didn't make it home from foreign wars, that's why we are free in this country to live life the way we like to live it and to do the things we like to do. And what better day than a Memorial Day to come down to the range and do some test firing on some guns. So this video might stretch out to be a long video because I'm going to test fire or I'm going to shoot two guns in this video. So you guys might want to watch the whole video, stay in there, hang into it, or skip to the end to see the new gun. The, the second gun we're going to shoot is a gun that I've just finished. It's been two years in the making little longer than two years and it is what we're going to call now the world's most powerful 45 caliber muzzleloader. Old Cyclops here has taken a second seat. He's, he's going to be coming up as number two now. But I want to shoot Cyclops some because I did a video on Cyclops several years ago and I just haven't had a chance to get back and do any more videos. I've been so busy in the shop. Business has grown like crazy. And the video, videoing has kind of taken a second seat, kind of like Cyclops is getting ready to do. It's taken a second place to the work that has to be done. And I just haven't had a chance to get out to the range much. We've done a lot of work. and But anyway, we're going to shoot some guns today. I want to start off with Cyclops. And the reason we're going to shoot Cyclops again is because in the first video... I put Cyclops out, and I didn't have a chronograph, but I had already chronographed it. And I said that the bullet, I was shooting a 350 grain bullet <clears throat> at 3,800 feet per second. Now, most of you guys believe me. Most of you guys know me for who I am. I'm not going to tell a lie and fib and stretch the truth and make it sound better than it is. If I say I'm shooting 3,800 feet per second with a 350 grain bullet, I am. But I've had a lot of people call me out on the, on the YouTube comments, and I don't approve those comments. I just delete them, and if they get too nasty, I block them. I block those people, and they can't even see my channel anymore because I don't need to deal with those kind of people. I know the world has got some haters in it, but most people are good, honest people, and they like what we do here at Hankins Custom Rifles. And you got a few that, that hate it. So the reason they hate it, and most likely, is because they're jealous. They say, why do you want a gun like this? It weighs 32 pounds. You can't hunt with it. It's not practical, and blah, blah, blah. Well, you can hunt with it because I've killed many deers with it. It is practical to me because I like it. You know, practical is all in what you make it. There's some guys that wants a car that runs 150 miles an hour, but that's not practical because... You can't drive at 150 miles an hour down the road. You get a ticket, but you got it anyway. So if that's what you want, that's that's all good, and I'm happy for you. I like this gun right here because it shoots 3,800 feet per second. It actually shoots faster than that, but I didn't say it shoots faster than that. I said 3,800, and last year we got it to 3,900 feet per second. Last winter, when me and Mark Clemens were shooting deer at a thousand yards or trying to, we never got that shot. They just wouldn't cooperate with us last year. But we chronographed this gun at 39, I think 3911 was what we got it to. Now I'm going to shoot the exact same load today that we were shooting last December when we were getting 3911. That was cold outside. Today, we may get a little faster than that. We might get a little slower than that. I don't know, but we're going to chronograph it. I got the lab radar set up, and we're going to try to get some velocities so that you guys can actually see it, and those guys that don't believe it can see it because that's what they wanted to see. They, they said in their little nasty comments that they wanted to see the proof of the velocities. So here they are. We're going to do it today. And if you still don't believe it, you can come to a Kentucky Challenge and I'll let you shoot Cyclops if you want to. And the, uh, the new gun that's going to be now the world's most powerful muzzleloader will also be probably at most of the Kentucky Challenges. So any of you guys who want to come and see it for yourself are welcome to come and see it. Um, it's a really nice rifle. It took a lot of work. 
and put a lot of time and effort and thought into this gun, but we're going to shoot it today after I shoot Cyclops. So we're going to move the camera around a little bit. We're going to come over here. I want to get you guys right on the, the lab radar so that you can see it. I'm going to shoot the gun five times for a velocity. Now, I will tell you the gun is loaded. I've got a piece of tape. Whenever my gun's loaded or if I take it hunting and I don't shoot it, I cover the muzzle with a piece of tape and I write on the masking tape, loaded. So we have it written on there. The gun is loaded. It's been loaded since last December when we were deer hunting with it. We had a polar bear shoot in February. We had a spring challenge shoot in April and I never shot this gun. So this gun's been loaded since December 15th or whatever our opening day of deer season was last year for our last muzzle loader season here in Kentucky. So we're going to shoot this load out of it first. And then I've got four more bullets and four powder charges stacked up here in my loading block. I do have pr five primer modules because I'll need one of those to fire off this load that's in the gun. So let's go ahead and move the camera around and when we get situated back up. I'll be right back with you guys. Okay guys, we're ready to shoot the first shot here. Um, like I said, this was loaded in December. We're gonna see how it does. You can see on the lab radar, the last time I chronographed this rifle, it shot 3,883 feet per second. That was last winter when we did our testing for the thousand yard deer hunt that just didn't work out for us. So we're gonna shoot it again. Hopefully we get good reading. Sometimes this lab radar picks up the shots and sometimes it don't. Y'all have them, you know how they work. Um, I'm gonna to try to get good readings. So I've already put a primer module in the gun and we're ready to go here. So let's shoot the first shot and see what we get. does not look like it picked up a shot. I don't think I had it turned on, so we're going to load this up again and we'll try it again. So as you can see though, the shot that was loaded in December went off without no problem. So give me just a minute. We're going to load this rifle back up and we'll be back on here in just a second. Okay, fellas, I didn't have it turned on. I'm pretty sure the, the light's supposed to be orange and I had it on blue. And then you've only got so much time to shoot before the orange light starts flashing. And you got to get the shot off in time. So we're going to try this again. I am loaded up and we're going to shoot. So let's see what we get out of this shot here. Okay, a little bit slow. It's 37.95. So we'll load it up. We'll shoot it again. Okay, so we're loaded up here. We're ready to shoot the third shot. Let me get my lab radar back on. 37.95 was the last shot. We've got a little buck walking across the field down there. You guys can't see it, but he's just come out like... He owns the place, walking across the field. There he went up in the woods now. We yeah. gotta have a orange light on. Okay, so we got 3802 on that shot. So we did break our 3800 mark, so you guys know I wasn't lying to you. Um, 
And I actually have toned this down just a little bit from, I think last year I dropped the powder charge five grains, but we're at 3802. So I'm gonna load it up again. We got two more shots and then we're gonna put this gun up and we're gonna break out the new rifle. Okay guys, shot number four. Let's see what we get this time. Okay, it says acquisition error, could not track the projectile. So we didn't get a, we did not get a reading on that shot either. Now I do think that this gun puts out so much concussion that it has a hard time reading it. And the lab radar, they say it will only read a bullet up to 4,000 feet per second. And this new gun that we have built, we plan on breaking that speed record. It's, we're going to shoot a bullet faster than 4,000 feet per second. And that's going to be a 350 grain bullet. And these are actually 353 grain bullets. So we do have a hard time getting readings. Just because the concussion is so much. And you have to have the lab radar set so close to it they uh, there is a aftermarket trigger device out mark clemens has one and it was working really good for us last time we was down here i don't have one of those but i probably should get one I know the lab radar seems to work most of the time on the other guns that we use it on, but I always have a hard time with Cyclops getting good readings. It'll read about half of the ones that, that you shoot it on. And you also have to make sure that it's aimed in the right direction and the recoil could probably move it. Let me see how far off it is. It's still on the target pretty good, so I don't know why it didn't pick up that last shot. We're going to try it again. Hopefully we can get another reading because this is the last shot that we're going to shoot out of this gun. We're at 37.95 and 38.02. Okay, we got a reading on that one of 3806. So that's a total of 11 out of the three that we got, three readings we got, that's a total of 11 feet deviation between the loads. That's not too bad, 11 feet per second, extreme spread. So we're at 3806, 3802, and 3795. So, there's our 3,800 feet per second, 350 grain Pittman Aeromax bullet is what I'm shooting. They're designed for long range hunting and that's what I built this gun for was long range hunting. Long range hunting is completely different than short range hunting and a lot of 
people that don't like this gun, they say it's not a hunting gun, but it is. You just have to use it for what it was made for, long range. You wait for the deer to come out. They're walking around five, six, seven, eight hundred yards. You wait for the shot. It's not like it's running through the woods at 50 yards and you just pull up and you can shoot at it because you can't do that. You have to have the conditions have to be perfect. You want to hunt in the evening when the wind's not blowing, early, early in the morning when the wind's not blowing, and you wait for that deer to stand still. You take an ethical shot, you practice, you actually go shoot a thousand yards. If you want to kill the animal at a thousand yards, you have to be able to shoot a thousand yards. And we shot last year several times. We, we come out several afternoons and practice the week or two weeks before the deer season opened. And I was able to keep the bullets in a group about that big at a thousand yards, six inch circle at a thousand yards. That's well within the vital area of killing a deer. So I felt very confident if a deer come out at a thousand yards, we could kill it and they just didn't come out. Last year, the year before last, we got one at 805 yards. Last season, they just wouldn't come out. The fields were full of mud. The, the farmer picked the crops late. The wheat wasn't growing. They didn't want to come to the corn for some reason, and we just didn't have a good hunt. So we'll, we will try it again next year <clears throat> and see what happens. For now, I'm gonna put Cyclops up, and I'm gonna break out the new gun and I hope you guys like this new rifle. Um, it is a masterpiece. So we'll be right back as soon as we get it set up on this bench. Okay guys, so here it is. This is what we are going to now call the world's most powerful muzzleloader because we plan on shooting this at 4,000 feet per second and maybe some more than that. We're just gonna have to work on a load, develop a good load and I know the guy that bought this gun is gonna work up a good load, he's really good and knowledgeable at these muzzle loaders and he'll come up with a load that will shoot that bullet 4,000 feet per second. So we're going to go over it a little bit. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the gun, what I can remember. It's been a long time coming, been well over two years in the making. We started ordering parts for this thing a long time ago, so they all are finally here and we have created this masterpiece work of art it was all done in my shop i did all the work um, building it other than the parts and the components that were bought so we're going to start here with the action this is a bad action uh, this action i believe was designed to shoot like a 375 shy tack cartridge case it's really long it's way longer than it needs to be to make a muzzle loader out of but we wanted that great big round action. It's two and a half inches in diameter. The barrel is a Brooks barrel and it's a one in 18 twist to shoot these 350 grain bullets at extreme long ranges and extremely fast. Um, the barrel, I believe we had the barrel turned 1.220 or so because of this flat spot. If it was any bigger than that, it would have been bigger than the action and that would have just not looked right. So we turned the barrel down to uh, one point, what was it, 2.220 or something like that. I can't remember, so don't quote me on these numbers. I do believe that the barrel finished out at 34 inches long. We put one of my self-timing tactical style muzzle brakes on it. That's the biggest brake I make. That's 1.865 in diameter, I believe, with six slots in it. It's pretty long. It should be extremely effective. We're hoping that this gun's not even going to hardly move in the bags. Um, the stock is a McMillan stock, and this was picked up somewhere at an auction or somewhere. I'm not exactly sure, but the, this was a used stock, and we picked it up fairly cheap and was able to make what we wanted to make out of it. Now, this stock, it's fiberglass, and it's completely filled with lead shot. So in comparison, my Cyclops rifle weighs 32 pounds. This rifle weighs 64 pounds. It's twice as heavy as Cyclops. Just happened to turn out that way, but this is a 64 pound gun. 
it's almost a job just to get it off and on the bench and load it. So kind of quick, we'll look out here on the end of the barrel. We put my little Hanks Precision gun parts logo on there. We bead blasted that on the barrel. And on the other side, we've got Hankins Custom Rifles. You guys can see that here in a minute when we go over there. I did the paint job in the shop, and all this is painted. None of this is decals. Now, I use stencils to do the painting, but there's no decal on here. That's all done with paint. Um, we did this, the paint job we did back last summer when we was gearing up for the election, and we all had these high hopes of getting Donald Trump reelected, but somehow or another they was able to come in and steal that from us, and y'all know it was stolen, but I won't get into my political views. So we wanted to name it something that had some meaning to it. So we named this rifle, We the People. So that just kind of stood out. We liked it. We named the rifle, We the People. And then we also wanted to make it look, I don't know what word to use, but we wanted to make it look old, make it look. Aged paper like parchment paper yeah I think that's what it is ain't it? parchment paper so I painted this yellow kind of a mustardy yellow and then I blended some black on it and we came up with all these sayings so it almost looks like the Declaration of Independence that's what we kind of wanted to make it look like all the the uh, amendments on there so on the top we got here on the top it says and these are all famous quotes from other people we don't I don't think we came up with any of these but ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. So we like that saying, and we threw it on here. Then here on the side, we've got one that I think Donald Trump said, law and order will be restored. And one of these days it will be. You and I will probably be dead by the time it happens, but law and order will be restored in this country, and we'll get it back originally, eventually. On the buttstock, we got one here that says, when government takes away citizens' rights to bear arms, it becomes a citizen's duty to take away government's right to govern. You guys have probably all heard that. Um, it's floating around on Facebook and different places. And so then if you come over here on the other side, we've got it all painted up on the other side as well. America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves. And I hope that everybody will listen to that and heed its warning because I do believe it's true. Then we've got here for the soldiers, and today is Memorial Day, so this is a good day to read that. It says, all gave some and some gave all. And the ones that gave all are the ones that's not here with us today. Then they are the reason that we're free. On the top, we've got another saying that says, Stand for what you believe in, even if it means you are standing alone. And that's pretty true, too. Sometimes you just got to stand up for what's right, even though other people don't believe what you feel if you feel it's right you should stand up for it um, we got a problem in this country now of offending everybody no matter what you do somebody's feelings get hurt you can't you can't talk to them you can't tell them what to do you can't you just got to be so careful with what you say that people's feelings get hurt. I know I've hurt people's feelings on some of my videos and I just can't help it. If you don't like it, don't watch the video or grow a pair and get over it. So I'm gonna pick this gun up and we're gonna look at the bottom side. And I'm sure that some of you's gonna say this gun ain't practical and it's pretty, it's pretty heavy. So we put the second amendment on here and you all probably know what that means and what it reads. It says, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. 
And everybody needs to remember that and stand up for your rights to keep and bear arms, whether it's muzzle loaders, AR-15s, M16s, automatic machine guns, if that's what you want, and you can afford it, then you have the right to buy it. Now on the very bottom, we've got another little saying here, and it says if guns are outlawed, then only outlaws will have guns. Now I have seen that on bumper stickers and on the back of people's trucks, and that's true also. If guns are outlawed, the law-abiding citizens turn in all their guns and only the outlaws are going to have the guns because they're not going to turn their guns in. Y'all know that. Now I'm just preaching to the choir now. So, And then on the very front, I put my name on here, Jeff Hankins. We put that on there because I was proud of this and I wanted to sign it and put a signature on here. And then we've got my Hankins Custom Rifles on the barrel. So yes, this gun's very heavy. It's one of a kind. Um, if you want to see it in person, come to the Kentucky Challenges. It will be down here. Um, and we're going to shoot it today. So we've got to move all this stuff over to the shooting bench. And we're going to load this gun up. I've bore sighted it, and it's never been fired. So we're going to, we're going to shoot it, try to sight it in at 100 yards, and see what we can do with this thing. So give us a second, get it set up, um, and we'll get going. Now one thing I didn't mention is the rifle scope. It's got a Night Force competition scope on it. It's a 15 by 55 power. Nice scope. I don't know if this is the scope that's going to be left on this gun, but it's here today for test firing. So we'll get back with you guys as soon as it's set up on the bench. Okay, guys, we're on the bench. We have We the People. That is the name of this rifle. It is now the going to be the world's most powerful muzzle loader, or it's either going to be one of the world's heaviest ones because this thing is a beast to load and put on the bench. You better be in shape if you're going to shoot this gun. So we're just going to shoot a couple shots at 100 yards, try to get it on paper. I did get it bore sighted, and we're going to chronograph a few shots. I'm not really here for chronographing. I just want to get it on paper, uh, get it so that the customer can come pick it up although he can handle that himself if he wanted to sight it in and all that stuff i just wanted to do a good video on this gun show it to my um, fan base my friends and people that watch my youtube videos i appreciate a thumbs up on the video another thing that i would like is if you guys could watch the commercials on these videos on youtube it really help us YouTube creators because YouTube has gotten so gun unfriendly that it makes it hard for us to put any content on YouTube and have it eligible for advertising. So everything has to be so-so on YouTube in order to be advertisable. And if it's not advertisable, then guys like me that makes these videos put it on there, we can't make any money. On YouTube now I'm not doing these videos to make money but it does help offset the time and the cost and the expense of the cameras and the, um, you know it just benefits so if you make a couple hundred bucks a year putting videos on YouTube I know there's people that make thousands of dollars a year that's all they do is YouTube videos but they're not doing it making guns or they're, they're doing it making they're doing makeup commercials and stuff like that you know and um, fishing shows and different things so the gun side of it it's very hard youtube is very unfriendly to us gun guys so commercials are 15 seconds go ahead and just watch through the commercial don't click off of it just watch it through it only takes a couple seconds of your time and it helps our revenue it helps our channel grow and it'll show youtube that these gun videos are wanted. It's not like we're out there promoting negative things towards guns. And I have to even watch what I say because they have robots that can pick up words in a video. So if you say something that goes against their guidelines, the community guidelines of YouTube, then they'll, they'll, they'll uh, turn your video off, they'll turn off your advertising, 
They've actually took a couple of my videos down because they were considered violent. Some of my deer hunting videos, a few of you guys saw those, but these were too violent because you got all these pansy asses out there that can't stand you see you shoot a deer and if they don't like to see it, they'll just don't watch it. But why complain about something? If you don't like it, don't watch it. We like to deer hunt. People like to fish. There's other people that like to beat a golf ball around the golf course all day. I don't watch golfing, but I ain't gonna complain about somebody that wants to go out and golf. But anyway, that's enough about all that. Let's shoot this gun. Give me a thumbs up on the videos and try to like them. Um, and let's move on. So let's see what we can do here. We're gonna shoot this thing and see if we can hit the paper. And notice the recoil on this gun, fellas, if it even has any. did not have much very little recoil we got 3822 feet per second out of this a little faster than Cyclops might be because of the longer barrel uh, I'm gonna see if I can find the bullet hole down there and make some adjustments from there okay I do see the bullet hole so we are on the paper I'm probably about eight inches low and a couple inches to the right. So let me bring that elevation up. And now let me bring it to the left. Okay, so we're going to load this up again, and we should be pretty much on the bullseye of the next shot. So if I can get this out of this rest. Stand it up over here and get her loaded back up. We'll be in good shape. You guys can see this funnel how long a funnel I had to make and you talk about hard you got to drill a hole through a piece of steel that far and that straight the wall thickness on this funnel is only it's less than 20 thousandths so you don't have much room for movement and that's a long funnel this is a one-of-a-kind funnel one-of-a-kind muzzle brake not really one of a kind muzzle brake. I do have these available for sale for anybody that might want one. I actually built those for like 375 and 408 Shitex. It would even work on a 50 BMG if you wanted to use it on there. One thing I've noticed already about pushing the bullets down this barrel is this barrel seems to be very consistent it feels good I did a few uh, test fits on some bullets before I ever loaded the gun I pushed a few all the way through and they slid through really really nice so this is the same bullets that I shot out of Cyclops I didn't resize them I didn't try to size them to fit this barrel they may need a little tweaking after this barrel gets dirty and fouls up but we'll just have to see. I'm probably not going to shoot this gun enough today to, to determine that factor. And I'll let Mark figure all that out when he gets possession of the rifle. And he's going to have to work out some to be able to handle this thing. We are shooting large rifle 
magnum primers with my standard 5 8 breech plug nothing fancy there just a standard breech plug that I put in all my guns um, 353 grain bullet The rifle does not have a safety on it. The trigger does not have a safety. So when the bolt is closed, the rifle's ready to fire. That's something that you gotta remember when you have a gun with no safety. Okay, that one's only 3772. So we'll be doing a little bit of experimenting here. I don't know why that was that one is 25 feet per second slower. Actually it's about 35 feet per second slower. Now the velocity difference could have been, or could be, can be caused from the amount of pressure you have on the powder charge. So you got to push it down the same every time. That could create velocity swings. And I guess there could be other things that caused it. That first shot was a brand new barrel. Second shot was the second shot down the barrel. So this thing has got to work itself in. It broke in good. And we did get close to the bullseye with that shot. So. Thirty-seven, seventeen. I just don't think something's right there, but that's what the number says. Thirty-seven, seventeen. The bullets are getting a little harder to go down. That's telling me that the barrel is getting fouled. So we may wind up having to size bullets a little bit smaller. You guys see this little T-handled ramrod that I make. 
that's why I made this thing. It's short. You can get a lot better leverage on it. So now when you put your other ramrod in, it's a lot farther down. You get your leverage on it. And that's all the way down. I brought several ramrods with me today because I didn't know for sure which one I was going to have to use on this gun. We got a Dewey rod that I put a bullet seating jag on in case I needed it. And then I've got these other two rods that I make. These are what I call my range rods. They're really nice to have, especially when you get a bullet stuck halfway down. This is a fun gun to shoot. It don't kick very hard. So 37.92, we've got a three shot group down there. The first two were in the same hole. That second one, even though it went faster, shot low by about a half inch. So we're at 37.92. Our first shot was what, 38.22. Then we had a couple that were slow. So we're just going to have to do a little work, do some load development, and see what we can do with this thing. For now, I'm done shooting at 100 yards. Now we're just going to have some fun. I'm going to ring that deer target out there at 444 yards a couple times, just for the fun of it. And then we're going to put this gun away and call it a day. I'm going to turn off the lab radar. I did really think that this gun would shoot faster on an average than Cyclops did, and it probably will once we figure out a good load for it. Probably don't have enough powder in it. We're going to have to add a little powder to it. Okay, guys, we're sighted. Uh, we're reloaded. We're sighted in down there on that target at 444 yards. I used the same drop data that I use on Cyclops, and I came up two and a half minutes. So. From 100 yards zero to 450 yards, say, it's two and a half minutes MOA. We're going to see if we can hit this on the first shot, so we're going to go ahead and get ready to go. So you guys can see the deer down there. I'm aiming at that deer just like if I was going to kill that animal. And here we go. And I hit it exactly where I was aiming. Center body mass right behind the front shoulder blade. That is where I like to shoot these deer at. I know a lot of people like to shoot the deer in the shoulder. But with bullets that we have for these muzzle loaders, they're designed to be accurate. In order to have an accurate bullet for a muzzle loader, it has to be soft so that it can obturate into the barrel the second that you pull the trigger. In order for it to obturate, I think I just said that, it has to be soft. If it's soft, 
when it hits bone or any kind of hard target it disintegrates so if you shoot these deer in the front shoulder and they run off it's because the bullet disintegrated and you need to start putting your bullet behind the front shoulder shoot them in the rib cage you got to get that bullet in the rib cage to hit the heart and lungs all you got to do is get it in that rib cage and the deer is going down it won't get up it won't run off it's going to drop right there all that energy is going to dump into the animal if you shoot them in the front shoulder the energy still dumps in the animal but it doesn't penetrate and get into their vitals um, a lot of you guys have seen it you've done it you've read articles and threads on the message board about deer that run off when you hit them in the front shoulder change your shot placement center mass body right behind the front shoulder blade they'll go down every time like a hammer now not many of you guys are going to hit a deer with a 350 grain bullet going as fast as what they're going out of these guns these guns are producing over 10,000 pounds of kinetic energy at the muzzle that's an unbelievable amount of energy so um, I think we'll load it up and shoot it one more time and then we're going to call it a day with this rifle. Okay guys, so I found two primers. They were laying all the way down there on the far end of the bench. They've been down there since the April shoot. That's the last time anybody's been here. But I saw them and I thought, well, what, what are they laying there for? They're not fired. They've never been used. And they look like federal gold medal match because they're purple. And I just dropped one of them off over there into the gravel. But I still have one left. And these have been sitting outside since April. Through the rain. Through the cold. Through the heat. And they were in a, position, they were in a place down there where they could have gotten rained on. And I'm going to try one of these things. And see if it will go off. Just for the heck of it if it don't go off we know why it's been sitting out since April that's two months ago or a month ago been out for at least a month we're gonna put it in here I just want to see if it'll go off after it's been sitting out all this time if it don't go off we'll load another module and shoot that deer because that's what we're gonna aim at going to get a little bit more um, we're going to make a little funner we're going to shoot this deer in the head so let me see if I can hit this deer in the head at 444 yards and there's actually a live deer out down there at 250 yards but we'll see if she runs off when we shoot this gun see if the muzzle blast scares her but I'm going to aim at this deer in the head let's see what happens Well, the primer went off, but I missed. So, I did not hit the target that time. If I had to guess, I think I shot right over it. Uh, two and a half minutes is probably more than I need. The deer didn't run off though. She's still standing down there. That's it on this gun. I've enjoyed shooting it, enjoyed showing it to you guys. I've actually enjoyed working on it, although it's taken me two years to build this rifle. I work on it here and there and put it together when I can. It's one of those projects that you just work on it when you get a chance to work on it. It is now done, so we'll be able to turn it over to the customer. He can do some really good load development, put a good scope on it, sight it in, 
bring it down to the next Kentucky Challenge, which will be the last weekend in August. Any of you guys watching this video, you want to come down and attend? It's the last weekend in August. Uh, there's nine benches down here now, so we've got plenty of extra room for guys to shoot. We got a uh, cooking area over here. So this, this place has really grown since the very first Kentucky Challenge. If any of you guys remember the very first one, we had two concrete benches and a tarp over our head. That was it. And 200 yards is as far as we could shoot. So um, I do believe I won that match, the 100-yard and the 200-yard match that year. I won both those shoots. I don't shoot in many of them anymore. I haven't competed in the last several challenges just because I'm so busy trying to keep everything going. Um, a lot of the other guys down here that come by, they work their little butts off too. And I couldn't do it without the help of all the other people jumping in. You got 20, 30 people going around. One guy, one guy just can't handle them all. But the last several shoots I haven't competed in. Probably won't compete in any more of them unless there are just not that many shooters that show up. I might jump in there and shoot just for the fun of it. But we're going to put this rifle away. We're going to call this video done. We the People is now what we're going to call the world's most powerful muzzleloader because it definitely has the capabilities to shoot more powder and shoot faster than Cyclops. We've built it bigger and we've built it heavier. The recoil on it is practically nothing. It's very, it's very nice to shoot. It just sucks to load to get it off the bench. It's very heavy. So there you have it, fellas. We, the people, will take no more. We need to stand up, do what's right. Till the next time, fellas, have a great day.